Welcome to the Press On Podcast. Join me as we uncover the journeys and lifestyles of top industry professionals and entrepreneurs, learning the secrets of their achievements. I am your host, Jan Larison. Let's go! Our guest today is Cody Pickett. We're really thankful to have you and appreciate you taking the time out because I know we've been trying to get this done for about two months and busy times, busy lives. It would have been nice if we could have done it in December because we'd had a lot to talk about with uh, going to Vegas and Mm -hmm. the history of Vegas with us for, for the most part. But so, Cody, what we want to do and what we try to do with the Press On podcast is bring people that are from the Valley or transplants to the Valley, whatever, and find out what it is that made them who they are today. So with you, I would like to know, I know you have a wealth of history and you are a native Idahoan. Mm -hmm. So, which is not normal nowadays. I know we were discussing (laughs) that earlier, but, um, what, tell us what got you to be financial insurance group. I know that you have a lot of, but we are trying to identify, you know, like how your business relates with real estate and you guys do a lot of real estate insurance, but, Mm -hmm. but how did that happen? So I want you to start from the start, not like, so what, how you got here. Okay. So I know hopefully that'll be a long, long, long conversation, but I stumbled upon insurance. So for my background, as you know, I grew up on chicken dinner road, you know, grew up on a horse and, um, you know, always had big dreams and goals of playing football at a high level. Uh, was, was very successful in that was able to go to the university of Washington and play, um, sold all of my horses, sold you my last horse right yes. before I went to college uh, or while I was in college because uh, there was no NIL, which that sucks because I would have done okay. Yeah, you'd have, uh, been, yeah, you'd have, would have done okay, excelled but, at that. But instead of having NIL, I was selling my horses to be able to uh, uh, pay for college or to pay for my um, extra expenses in colleges. But um, played football for a long time, was drafted by the 49ers, um, played in the NFL for three years, and then went to NFL Europe for a season, um, and then played in the Canadian League for four or five years and was kind of thinking, okay, how am I going to transition? I mean, football's been my life. How am I a guy that can just hop into the business world? Like, what am I going to do? Is it going to be real estate? Is it going to be this, that, or the other thing? And I was lucky to meet my my business partner and his family, the Pugmire family. Uh, and in about two or three years into going into Canada, they're like, hey, let's, you know, let's start a branch of insurance and um, we'll do mortgages on the side type of deal till you kind of get things rolling. I had no idea about any of this. I mean, literally like deck pages on insurance were foreign to me. Nothing in at University of Washington prepared Zero. you for insurance. Zero. I mean, zero. <laughs> <laughs> what prepared me for insurance? Uh, I guess, but let me tell you how I got. So going back and forth to Canada, I was in uh, my buddy Nate's office doing the mortgage thing. I mean, every transaction was just really, it was difficult, you know, no matter, you guys know in the real estate world and in the mortgage transactions, there was just a lot to uh, getting somebody qualified for a loan. Um, and on the insurance side of things, um, it was really, it's a relationship business, right? Knowing the coverage, knowing what they need to have, pointing them in the right direction, great, but really in the independent insurance world, which I am, I'm a broker. So I have tons and tons of carriers to be able to take care of my clients. It's about relationships and service. And so for me being in the football world for all those many years, I know how to handle different relationships. I mean, when you're in the football world, you have different guys of different ages, different ethnicities, different walks of every part of the life. So for me, the relationship piece is one of my strongest points. And then I've surrounded myself like a quarterback would with an awesome team. I mean, have, we've got 20 people on our team now. So, um, we're very comfortable in knowing the ins and outs of the insurance world. And for me, my biggest thing is just building relationships. So how long start to finish? What year was that? How long did it take you to get to where you are now? Oh yeah. A long time. Well, so when we started our branch, it was just Jeff and I, we had no account managers, no help. That was in 2010. So, it was About 14 years. Yeah. October 15th of 2010 is when we wrote our first policy. Dan Jaffick, uh, who's my first client was so awesome. Uh, he can never leave me because he's been my first one. Um, but it's been 14 years. Um, it was just Jeff and I for four or five years, just trying to learn the ropes, you know, learn how everything works, building our uh, relationships with our carriers. Um, like I said, being a part of financial insurance group is a great thing because we have so many different carriers that we can write with. Um, and now 
fast forward, here we are in 2024 and we've got about 20 people on our team. We've got a couple different branches. And like I said before, just have an awesome team around us that, that really help us thrive and, and do well. I, I think I saw your branch in Payette. Yeah. Or Fruitland. Is it Fruitland technically? Yeah. So, so Jason Hansen started financial insurance group. Um, so we are, I guess, I don't know what to say franchised or the umbrella of FIG. Um, Jeff and I have the national branch. So we're here in Incuna. Robin mm-hmm. has our CUNA uh, branch. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're affiliated with all the different offices. I think there's about 12 or 13 different locations around the Northwest. I'm licensed in about 15 or 20 states. Um, but yeah, just a big, awesome team that we're a part of. And like I said, Jason, was it was awesome for him to give us the opportunity to to build our branch right so if anybody wanted to um become an insurance salesman but i mean you're not an insurance salesman you're an insurance broker right right absolutely so then you went to university of washington and then you had to go take all of these insurance courses Mm -hmm. were they difficult um they were fairly not not really not like um you know the the loan officer exam is is different Mm -hmm. um the, I mean, the insurance exam was, was okay. I mean, it's just knowing the things you need to know, you know, yeah. knowing the things you need to know. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, really, and in the day to day, you learn the insurance kind of as you go through the fires, I guess you could say, like literally, um, right. you know, the different experiences because the insurance exam can, can prepare you for some certain things. Uh, but being in the business 14 years, we've seen a lot of different crazy things. And uh, we feel like we're really able to um, educate our insurers on the things that they need. And, and then sometimes, you know, they really, oh, I don't need that. I don't need this. Well, you don't. But let me give you a couple examples of things that happen in real life. And oh, OK, yes, this, right. is, this is the direction I need to go. So Sounds like honestly, insurance and real estate is super similar mm-hmm. because there's uh, the relationships are key, mm-hmm. you know, and you want to build your relationships and, like you said, have the same client that you had, you know, when you very first started. We've done the same thing and it's actually fun. And I know they kind of say give you a bad time and say that you're running for mayor all the mm-hmm. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but I can yeah. relate. I Especially can. my dad. Yeah. I know, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> He wants to prefer, try it. He prefers talking to two or three people, and I talk to two or three thousand people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So do we. But so, well, that's very cool, and I appreciate your background. And are you thankful that that's how your career has? Absolutely. I mean. Yeah. The thing when you get into the business world, and I try to tell people that play sports and are, you know, younger people, I mean, land and different people, like, what are you going to do when you grow up type of deal? Because this, the sports world lasts for a certain amount of time. And then it's like, all right, you got to hop into the real, real world and you have to have something you enjoy. I mean, that might sound cliche or whatever, but yeah. I love coming to work every day. I mean, I love coming in here. I love the team that I have. Um, I love what I do. And I think mm-hmm. that's how the people that are really successful, they really enjoy what they're doing. And, that, and that's for me. I'm so lucky I found it. Um, um, 14 years, uh, you know, 29 years old, I started the business. I look back, I'm like, man, I wish I would have started earlier. But with that being said, all those different uh, relationships and those 10 plus years of playing football after high school or however long it was, um, kind of prepared me for the different relationship aspect that I need in the insurance world. Right. Right. So I have some questions. I like yeah. reached out to some people that we know and mm-hmm. you may a few that you don't, but, um, and wanted to ask, you know, what made Cody Pickett who he is. Right. So first of all, you mentioned earlier that you grew up on chicken dinner road and, um, we went to Cal- Caldwell high school first mm-hmm. or first Valley then Caldwell. Mm-hmm. When you were young like that, was it hard to change and go, to a different school or was it not a big deal for you? Uh, it was, it was because, you know, I had up until eighth grade, I mean, all the friends and friends that I've grown up with, I mean, I lived out there, you know, a couple minutes away from West Canyon, a Mm -hmm. mile away or whatever. And then going into your freshman year, not only going into a high school was a big change, but, but going to a different school. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a big change, but I mean, I had great coaches around me. I mean, I'm still lifelong. I mean, I'm lifelong friends with all of my, my high school coaches. Unfortunately, a couple of them have passed, um, but just great people. I knew that was the right fit for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and those guys were great mentors in my life uh, for a long, long time. Right. And that, how do you say that when you are a young man in a sports program, mm-hmm. 
it's amazing how many guys you go back and say, Hey, who are the biggest mentors in your life? Yeah. And it's their coaches. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And especially, I mean, I had fantastic high school coaches. I mean, I got coach Foreman on the wall behind you here. I mean, he's been coaching for 50 years. He just retired. I mean, he's, you know, like he jokes, I'm the son he never had. I mean, he coached me from 96 to 99 uh, for three years of high school basketball is probably some of the best times I had. I mean, I was very successful going on after that, but I always reflect back to my high school days. Um, and he's been a huge part of my coaching. You know, mm -hmm. I hopped into coaching the same time I started my insurance business. I've been a high school coach for 14 years. Um, and Coach Ford has been with me the whole time. He's he just retired this year after 50 years of coaching. And what a what a what an awesome thing for him to be able to, you know, touch so many lives. I mean, obviously you're not gonna make everybody's not gonna love you, but that's not really the, the job. I mean, the job is to help build character of of young men or young women or whoever you're coaching and and try to teach them the hard lessons. And that's that's tough in this day and age because because, you know, people want to be told what they want to hear, but but they don't always need that. Sometimes they need the hard conversation. So uh, he's been a huge influence for me and, and helped me get to where I am today. I've been able to watch you two coach together mm -hmm. and it is so much fun. He's just super dynamic and fun to watch and you're fun to watch to coach. But Appreciate it. so what's the difference between playing and coaching? <sighs> Oh, playing and coaching. What's the difference? Well, in the basketball world, uh, especially the high school basketball world, I'm probably more stressed as a coach than I am as a player. Um, and I tease Coach Fortner about this because I had control when I can play. You know, True. as a coach, <laughs> you got to point them in the right direction and you let you got to let them go. So um, I think that's the, the the biggest thing is is the, the impact in the game. I mean, I'm an eagle. I have fantastic parents and fantastic players. So mm -hmm. uh, we've been fortunate to be good for a long, long time. Um, and I think the biggest difference is just, you know, trusting your players that they're going to go make the plays and you just got to prepare them as best you can and, and hope they do well. Completely. Like I understand we were joking earlier about having control or being in control of mm -hmm. things. And mm -hmm. so when you're coaching your kids, how is that? So coaching my kids is different than my high school kids. Cause I can physically tune them up if I need to. <laughs> You can uh, like physically put yeah, them where I they need to go. Physically tune them up, and that's <laughs> what uh, my high school my high school kids are so great to my little ones. Uh, my little kids think my high school kids walk on water, but I always joke with them about, hey, you know, if I get frustrated with my high school player, I can I can give him some thoughts uh, verbally, but I can't actually put my hands on him. And I joke with my little guys, hey. I can, I can tune you up if I need to when you get in high school. Probably that comes back from my dad. My dad literally me walking off the field and him finding me in the corner of the end zone, mm. getting a hold of me. So uh, anyway, I think that's a little bit different coaching your own than coaching somebody else's kids. Yeah, that's true. I've seen it. So so here's some more questions. But we're going to go back to your dad and like maybe we'll go with it right now. So who was your biggest influence growing up? And with your choices that you made, oh, it was definitely my dad. You know, yeah. my mom was fantastic. My mom and dad. Um, uh, but as far as you know, the direction, I had a ton of respect for my dad, and you know, he was very successful in the in the the line of work that he was in uh, in the rodeo world. So uh, he was definitely my my biggest influence. Um, you know, he he played college football and and had to make that tough decision whether to go to the rodeo world or stay with the football world, and and. Uh, yeah, so he was definitely my biggest influence. I still look up to him to this day. Um, yeah, he's an awesome influence for me. And, and the football world is different, you know. Like I feel like there's things that we didn't know. I mean, he played to a college level and and could have maybe taken the next step, but chose to go be very successful with rodeo. But every line of business and every walk of life, there's different things that you have to learn. So uh, there are some things that maybe we would have did different. I mean, I probably would have left after my junior year. He was he told me I should have. I'm a loyal guy. Um, as some other people I know are very loyal, but, um, the, the sports world, that's why I love high school. The, so for, the sports world in high school is like, I don't know if this is corny or whatever. It's like at the purest form, right? Like it's just awesome in high school, college. It's definitely a business. And then obviously the next level, it just scales that, that business. And, and, and um, I guess that's why I'm successful in the insurance world because I've been in the business of football and um, yeah, it, 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 it scales up the higher you go. But um, yeah, I think that a lot of times guys that are athletes, jocks, whatever you want to call them, people overlook them as just how mentally tough they are. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's great to see guys like you be super successful and it's all over the place. If people mm -hmm. would just open their eyes and see who the guys are that are winning in life, yeah. they're guys that have been a part of the team. They've led, they've got leadership from, you know, whether they're the quarterback or whether they're the guy on defense that 
is yeah. lining everybody up and making sure they're seeing what's going down. I mean, guys that know how to play in a high pressure situation are, you know, yeah. over the top successful in business. Well, that, so, that's and that's really more important. I mean, I'm so proud of my college education from the University of Washington. So proud of it. Um, but as far as like me managing my team here in the insurance world and dealing with tough situations, I mean, that goes back to like being a little kid and having to condition after practice. Practice, you know, I mean, cash the other night. We're running his butt off after practice. Dad, why are the, you guys are yelling at us to run and stuff, and you don't have to run? I said, you're building character, man. You're learning how to deal with hard situations. Yeah. And all those hard situations through the the sports career help you deal with business situations. Right. It's true. Doing hard things, like mm -hmm. if you do hard things every day, it makes yeah. the the other stuff easy. So, so okay. Here's a few more of the questions that I was given. So, what's your mindset? What's your mindset when you were going into football games? And I don't know if you want to go from like high school to college to the pros but um that's a great question and i don't know i feel like um mindset you always felt the best the more prepared you were i mean so the more prepared you know the old corny saying or whatever saying you want us to stay ready so you don't have to get ready that was the mindset was and i and had fantastic coaches to prepare me for this but the more you could be prepared for the situation i mean i'm a big guy on 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 envisioning what the opportunity is going to be envisioning putting yourself in the stadium putting yourself all through the course of whatever was going to happen prior to having it happen so that way when you get there you can just play or you can just react and the same thing in the insurance world i mean if you have a big meeting with a client trying to put yourself in the environment around the people knowing the personalities so that way when you're there you're not trying to figure it out you can just actually react and be normal and that's and that's that's how it was in football you know whatever environment if whatever high school place you were going to if it was cold if it was hot or whatever trying to prepare yourself the best you can so you can be successful in the in the opportunity you have when you started out in insurance, did you game time role play at all? Did you like role play with? Yeah. I mean, I didn't have anybody that I necessarily would role play with, but yeah, as far as envisioning that yeah. opportunity, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing I think with insurance was, is just for me, we scaled, we grew appropriately. I would say um, a lot of people that know me, I mean, I'm very big on character and trying to do things the right way. Mm -hmm. I didn't start with insurance and go after the huge commercial accounts that I have now. Right. I wasn't ready for that. And I knew that. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to jump into that water before I was ready. So Jeff and I really scaled our business to handling the things that we knew we could handle. And then as we grew, as we added pieces to our team, then we take took the bigger steps and the bigger steps to where now, I mean, I'm very, very confident in our team. I mean, we handle pretty much anything and everything, um, but it's taken us, it's taken us a good amount of time to grow that. And, and, our, and our numbers and our growth have been um, consistent with how we've wanted to do it. I mean, it's the slow, steady grind mm -hmm. to be the quality company we wanted to be. And that's, you know, that's just building the foundation, you know, in the football world, the same thing. You start at fifth grade tackle football and you grow to the NFL. I mean, it's, you got to take steps appropriately. Right. So when you, so back to the, we're going back and forth from business to football, but so as you say, you prepare mentally for, um, your game time situation, whether it's insurance or football, how do you prepare as a coach for your games? Do you do the same thing? Same thing. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it, it, and I try to tell my kids, you know, the vision of the environment, whatever school we're playing at, what they're going to run offensively or defensively, just trying to get them ahead to prepare for the situation so that you can be, be ready. And that's where, you know, my high school coaches were, were absolutely fantastic. Like I said, mentors in my life. Um, one of the biggest coaches I had, you know, coach Gilbertson at university of Washington was fantastic. I would say one of the biggest, biggest influences I had as I got older was Mike McCarthy, who's the head coach for the Cowboys now. I mean, he's on the wall behind me. Yeah. He was, he was very hard on us to prepare us. And I can't thank him enough for it. Cause that was never my mold coming up. I mean, being a guy at Caldwell, I don't want it to sound a certain way, but the brain power part of it wasn't a huge thing for me. Cause I was just kind of a guy, I was bigger, stronger, faster, and I could, make plays because I was a guy, you know, and then the older you get the high school level, the college level, the NFL level, now it's a brain power thing, you know, mm -hmm. and, and even in college, you know, there were certain plays or certain situations that, you know, my coaches will say that was probably one of my biggest, um, setbacks is that the mental piece of it, not that I couldn't handle the mental piece of it, but I didn't want to grind at the mental piece of it. You know, I just wanted to 
I was maybe the old school Brett Favre day, like, hey, let's just figure it out and go play. Power through. You power, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, and just, you can't really do that. And Mike McCarthy was huge for me to teach me the mental piece of it. And I only played for him for a season, but all that preparation, he used to always say that, you know, that, you know, this mental preparation is going to prepare you for life. And it really has. And I, I can't, can't thank him enough for that. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. So, so, um, how do you stay motivated? Oh, um, I don't know. It's in my DNA. Yeah, I mean, it I, might, it might my, be. My DNA, I mean, uh, I mean, the day you think you got to figure it out is the day you got to quit, right? And like, why not try to be better? I mean, if you're not growing at anything in life, you don't feel good, you know, from yeah. that's, you know, um, if you're not growing, you're dying. Yeah. hundred mm -hmm. percent, you know, and I like, you know, sometimes I make my wife crazy with that because, you know, going to the gym or doing these things or, I mean, that's just the competitiveness in me, you know, I mean, I had some health scares that, uh, you know, I feel like got through, but now I'm kind of trying to take it to the next level and give it back to where I feel good again. And, and, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, being an athlete and being a guy that's always been successful athletically, um, you gotta be wanting to grow. I mean, I, like I said, coming in here in the insurance world every day, you know, motivating our team for us to grow. Um, we have so many different ways for them to grow as a team. I and mean, we never want anybody on our team to just show up and this is how it's going to be. And there's no room for growth. So, you know, with pay and t different things, you know, we, we try to incentivize our team for them to want to be excited about coming into the office to be better. That's great. That's great information for any business owner at all. So when you were younger, because I do know your DNA, mm -hmm. for anybody that doesn't know, we have some of the same DNA, mm -hmm. but when you were younger, did you always know what your life was going to look like? Yes. That's crazy. I mean, no, I get it. I get I, it. I mean, I, it's crazy. Uh, and then there's forks in the road where it's like, nah, that's not the right path. I mean, this might sound crazy, but you know, growing up on chicken in a road, I knew I was going to play in the NFL. I just knew I was going to play in the NFL. I mean, I thought I was going to, you know, play in the NFL, be Troy Aikman, win Super Bowls and be married to whoever in this universe, <laughs> right? Like just all these different paths. Um, and then, you know, that kind of goes how you want it to go. And then you get into certain pieces like, do I really love this game? Like I thought I love the game, you know, when, when you get, you know, to the NFL, do I really, really love it? And I really, I don't know. I just, there was pieces there that like, it wasn't really right, you know? And then the whole, you know, spouse thing. I mean, I, I married, um, my high school sweetheart, you know, and, um, I couldn't be happier, you know, like so there's different p paces as you go. I knew where I wanted to get, but as you get older, there was different forks in the road and things, my football world could have been way different. I mean, I could have left after my junior year, who knows where I would have got drafted. I mean, I had a first or second round projection. I, I broke every PAC 10 record at the time. You know, I could have been a first or second round draft pick, but I probably wouldn't be sitting here. You know, I mean, I wouldn't be married to, to Carly. I wouldn't be as happy as I am. Like my life has worked out amazingly perfect. It's been great. Um, but there's different forks that if you look at different ways, football, maybe it was the wrong decision. This, maybe it was the wrong decision. This, maybe it was the wrong decision. But as far as life and how it's worked out, it, yeah, I took the right, right path. Right. So I know that your dad made the choice to go rodeo. I remember the phone call that came to our house when he like told our parents that he wasn't going to. That call didn't probably go over very well. No, it was, it was actually too grandma Pickett and yeah. she said D Pickett I'm not going to make you do anything yeah. and that was and I remember hearing that and I'm like well what does that mean but I knew I mean yeah. I, I was pretty young so yeah. uh, did you ever think when you were younger that you'd rodeo yes yes I mean I still have um, you know lived through other people or lived through different things but yeah I mean yeah, I look at, like I said before, those different paths of, Hey, could I left early and been to the NFL? What would that have looked like? What would it have looked like if I didn't went to the university of Washington, if I would have, cause I could really rope in high school. What, yeah. would, what would it look like if I would have went and roped with my dad? I mean, would it would have been like, you know, JD Yates and his dad. I mean, could we have made the finals? Would, would he have killed me being in the truck with him all that time? You know, like how, could I have made it to the finals? I mean, I'm confident that I could have, if that would have been my path, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, I think about those things, but like I said before, 
I'm in a perfect spot. You know, I got to kind of live through different, different people and different family members and different pieces. But, uh, yeah, you always think about that, you know, what, what path could have taken me here and, uh, how would it have been? But my dad was pretty good influence on me on knowing, you know, the quality of life, you know, the guys that are, you know, out there grinding rodeo on, and it's a, it's a tough way to make a living. I mean, there's a ton of perks to it and there's a ton of things that are really, really hard that people don't really realize. Um, and so he, I feel like he did a good job of teeing me up to this, what I have now, even though we didn't know where this direction would lead us. It wasn't like, Hey, you're going to be an insurance agent. Right. I mean, he just, you know, he wants to give me more crap about it than anything, you know, yeah. cause he thinks I'm running for governor or whatever, but I think that's it a worked great out. idea. It worked out. It worked out. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, I, for me to go into real estate, like it was completely, I couldn't be a cattle buyer like your yeah. grandpa Pickett. Yeah. And yeah. if I could have, I would have, cause I love, there's nothing I enjoyed more than traveling all over and going to those ranches and moving yeah. cattle and, processing cattle and all the things. It was just, I love doing that, but, but my path led me a different way. And I look back at maybe a couple forks in my road that I I'm, I'm thankful that where I am today too. And, mm-hmm. and anyway, that's enough of that. But so we said who the biggest influence in your life was your dad. And, um, what if you could tell young men or young women, like, I know your kids, you keep them teed up going in the right direction. What is something that you could tell them about how to go game plan for success? Um, well, there's, I guess that's maybe a two part answer, a two part. Number one, you got to find something you love, whatever it is. I mean, if that's your relationship, if that's your career, if that's your, whatever it is, you got to love what you're doing and your parents your surrounding influences can't want it more than you want it. And that's really, I mean, if there's so many kids nowadays that have, they got their toe in the water with one. And I'm not saying you got to go specialize. I'm not going to say you got to go eat, sleep and drink, whatever career path that is. But at some point in time, you've got to figure it out that, Hey, look, this is what I'm going to do. Uh, you know, burn the boats or whatever for plan B (laughs) and you've got to go all into it. Right. And then, and if it doesn't work, okay, then you can pivot or take that fork in the road or whatever you want to say. But, um, You know, there's, there's so many different ways to be successful. There's so many different ways to make money. There's so many different ways to be successful, um, in, in relationships and business and whatever, but ultimately you're never going to have that success if you're not fully invested into what you're doing. And I think like back to me in my football days, I mean, I was fully invested up into a certain point and then there gets to be gray area. Like, Hey, is this right for me? And that's where you're, you can't be successful if you don't eat, sleep and drink it and love it really. And so I think that would be the biggest thing for me and for influences of young people is, you know, find something you love and work your tail at it to be successful and don't come up with plan B and, until that fork comes in the road. Yeah. When the fork comes, you just fail forward. Yeah. You just yeah. have to keep going, you know, follow whatever your gut says and figure it out from there. Exactly. And those, and those forks will come. Yeah. They will. So what is one thing that someone told you once that you've clung to that's helped you and create the person you are today? Oh, one thing uh, that I've come to. Um, I mean, well, there might couple, be multiple yeah, well, things. Well, yeah, a couple of things. I mean, like, I don't know, the Mike McCarthy thing about preparing, the way you prepare situations will, you know, the stay ready so you don't have to get ready. The preparing to succeed is a big thing uh, for me. I mean, I did have, this is crazy, but I did have a teacher one time that I turned in a project about, like, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I was going to play in the NFL, and that teacher did make the mention of, that's not realistic. You're from Caldwell. You're from this and that. And I've kind of stuck with that, like the chip on your shoulder, like, Hey, I would, and it might've been a sub or whatever. I wanted to say who it was, but (laughs) I I made it. So like, so those things like kind of having the chip on your shoulder, that's kind of stuck with me of, Hey, you can't do something. Watch me type of Mm -hmm. deal. So, um, you know, I, I love, I love that kind of motivation or that kind of challenge that if somebody doesn't think I can do something, I love, Prove them wrong. Mm-hmm. Prove, Prove them, them wrong. wrong. And more for me than them, just to know that, um, you know, I tell my kids this all the time, like literally the sky's the limit is what you want to do. I mean, I, that come back, that could come back to a corny saying, but really it's reality. I mean, look at some of the people in this world that are just, or all the people in this world. I mean, if you're LeBron James and you're 6'10s and blessed, giftedly, athletically, you're not going to be, my kid's not going to do that, right? He wasn't the God given abilities, but as, as far as being successful in different areas that really you can do anything you really, really 
want to do if, 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 if the cards fall right and you really work your tail off. Right. right. I, another thing, um, you really can do whatever you want to do. I mm -hmm. mean, I was told that growing up all the time mm -hmm. and didn't really know that I believed it always. Mm -hmm. But as the older I get, I'm like, there's so much truth to that. Yeah. Just, there's so much truth to that. If you just choose your path, go for it and never give up or pick a different path. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, just I, keep going. It's, it's so true. And now, now as you get older and I might defend that teacher that told me that I couldn't be successful because the older you get, the more you realize how some of these things seem untouchable. I mean, I hear my kid talk now and he's like, dad, I'm going to play in the NFL. And I'm like, gosh, buddy. I'm like, really? Like, but he doesn't have that fear or that he's doesn't have that unrealistic, like thought on it. No. And I'm not going to take it away from him. Absolutely you know, like not. you go get it. You Don't know? tell him no. And I, I you got to work the tail off. You got to love it. And you got to eat, sleep and drink it. You yeah. know, when he's has his ass on the couch and doesn't want to do anything. I'm like, Hey, remember what you told me? You better <laughs> you go, gonna do? go make something happen here. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So we've probably touched on this, but this is one, one of the last questions that I have. If you could tell your young self anything, what would it be? Oh, uh, if I could tell my young self anything, I mean, I made so many mistakes. I made so many things that, um, things that I'm proud of things that I'm not proud of. Um, but I literally just stayed the course and that's what I would tell that young, that young self. I'm a huge guy that has anxiety, like I anxiety and, and, um, different, you know, I didn't realize growing up that that was a thing, you know, it was just always like, Hey, rub some dirt on it. Go just go figure it out. But anxiety was a big thing for me, but I just always just stayed the course, you know, took one step ahead of me, one step ahead of me, stayed the course, took a deep breath and would go. And I would just tell my young self that, Hey, things are going to work out. You know, those forks in the road will end up right. Just go with your gut, keep grinding and, and you're going to end up in a great spot. Oh, I think that's great information, Cody. And I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate you taking the time sure. to hang out with me sure. and to be on my little podcast. Like you said, I'm just stepping out of my comfort zone, doing something that, you know, getting comfortable being uncomfortable, Love it. but to have you here is, um, or I guess we're here in your office with all your memorabilia, which is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad we were able to do that. And I, you know what, in a year when I'm better and I've got this, you're coming back on. I love it. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. For listening to today's episode, please remember to subscribe, rate us, and leave a review. And please follow us on Instagram at Larison Real Estate. I'm Jan Larison, and keep pressing on.